All right, so now we're at Dragon Quest, and uh, yeah, quick run through. Um, it's time for the Great Dragon Migration, which only happens once every thousand years, or, or what did they say? I don't know, once every lifetime, if not longer. So, um, I guess it's kind of like the uh, this meteor shower thing from the other Spike episode. But anyway, um, the gang's all uh, gonna watch it. They've dug a trench so they can. Uh, Camouflage themselves and watch the gigantic flock of dragons flying by. And everyone but Fluttershy, because she gets a moment where she refuses to be pried out of her house at the beginning of the episode. So and then she applies her newfound assertiveness by uh, you know, slamming Rainbow Dash to the floor and stomach stomping her and jumping out the window. So, okay, glad to see she's learned that lesson. But, um, all right, so anyway, uh, they all watch the dragons and... Um, Rainbow Dash, when she sees one do a loop-de-loop, -loop, she uh, tries to play cool. She's like, oh, that's an easy move to do. And then they, uh, she then accidentally almost gets cr caught in a crossfire as two dragons are fighting with each other. One of them shoots fire that comes her way. She ends up a little bit sins. Of, <laughs> so, um, yeah, she has to eat some humble pie there. But then, uh, meanwhile, as everyone's a little nervous, Spike, you know, he's loving this. He's... Uh, um, going up my wall, yeah, dragon, yeah, dragons are, us dragons are sure awesome stuff, huh, and then, um, but he says this while he's wearing this pink apron, which, um, I don't know if we've ever seen him, I mean, we've seen him, seen him bake before, I think, but this episode, well, it goes out of its way in a lot of ways, but, yeah, starting with a pink apron, and then Rainbow Dash starts laughing it up, she's like, uh, yeah, you're, um, you know, what? Lots of stuff. Oh yeah, that's a really scary apron spike for a scary dragon. Uh, stuff like that. And so Rarity comes to his defense, but she kind of makes things worse. She starts going on about how cute he is. And um, yeah, Spike, he um, is, gets insecure about this. He blushes, and, um, he, but he can't. Uh, refute it because every time you know, Rainbow Dash tries to tell him he's this lame dragon, he doesn't have it. So what if I like to wear aprons? Uh, let's see how you like it when you get blueberry stains on your feathers. That's a tough stain, and I mean, okay, so Spike is a wimp now. Like Spike, who uh, did the two-on-one -on -one wrestling match with the Diamond Dogs, uh, nearly took Rainbow Dash's head off, uh, shooting fire at her, at her when she complained about her popcorn, and we just established has the ability any time he chooses to give in to the madness and in turn into a gigantic dragon that is worse than anything uh, the town has ever seen before, the worst dragon they've ever seen. Spike is a wimp. Like, I, don't know, I mean, I said before that uh, I stopped myself in the last Spike episode saying they made him act out of character because they sort of left the door open to, if they wanted to to... Uh, make him go bad, to, to, there's a bad side to him, but this really, really, really does not seem like anything we've seen from him before. He was just sort of a uh, loyal little schmuck who, I mean, he can be a smart aleck, it's also blood, but I mean, he's a wimp, I mean, isn't that, well, we know that's Fluttershy's gimmick, but just get that way to be seen before. But, okay. Anyway, though. Uh, Remember about that, but um, all right. So he decide he's grown into an existential crisis by this. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't measure up to other dragons because he's a little guy who can't fly and uh, likes to you know live with ponies and bake things. So okay, um, he decides he's gonna join the dragon migration after he can't uh, find any information on dragons. He knows nothing about dragons. Twilight. Uh, she's actually, she supports him, she stays up all night with him researching dragons, but there's just nothing about them, so, uh, yeah, I guess ponies are too afraid to get close to them, and, uh, just have not, uh, been able to find a lot, apparently they're rare too, so, yeah, they're out of luck, Spike decides he's gonna join the dragon migration, uh, he, you know, he finds a bunch of dragons, it, well, I mean, he follows the dragon flock, and he arrives at the place uh, they get they get together at, and we never find out what this dragon migration is for, and have baby dragons. I think. But um, okay, so uh, he gets there, and um, the 
obviously the giant dragons. He um, is well, they uh, he's a baby, so he heads over to the teenage dragons because that's the thing here. The teenage dragons, they're a bunch of punks that uh, try to haze him and stuff. They start making fun of him right away, but they yeah they may they haze him. They put him to the test to tell. Telling yeah, we're gonna make you prove that you're a dragon, a real dragon, if you're from Ponyville, and it's really just to make fun of them, or so it seems. But um, after uh, not doing so well and uh, belching and uh, king of the hill, and um, thankfully they forgo the armpit farts and whatever. But uh, he does a lava can in the lava cannonball. Competition, they do cannonballs on a lava pit because dragons are fireproof. We've established that. Uh, Spike accidentally does a belly smacker, and uh, they're surprised actually, they're impressed by his ability to shrug that off, so he starts to win them over. And then they invite him into the gang, and meanwhile, uh, Twilight Rarity and Rainbow Dash have followed him disguised as a dragon to in the suit that Rarity made to make sure he um, is safe. I get to make sure nothing bad happens to him. But and they've kept him out of trouble. They act, they've helped him in a they helped him in a few of the hazing games to uh, make sure he didn't totally go down without a fight, but, or he didn't totally look bad in all of them. But anyway, though, they start to worry that he's gonna leave them for the dragons now, and then they take him on a night raid to steal some phoenix eggs and smash them and. Uh, Spike is assigned to lure Mommy and Daddy Phoenix away, and he actually manages to do so. And meanwhile, the dragons, though, they find the eggs they wanted to steal are already hatched, and they are these little sprightly baby phoenixes that the dragons can't catch. So, uh, Mommy and Daddy Phoenix, then when they hear their babies calling, they come back, they do a bunch of light shows and fiery phoenix moves to um, strike down the dragons to lose them, and then they manage to disappear with their babies. But Spike finds the one egg that hadn't hatched, and they congratulate him. They pressure him to throw it on the ground, smash it. But then he uh, thinks of, I guess, himself as a helpless egg. And, I mean, he he refuses. He straight up tells them he's not going to do it, stands up to the whole dragon pack. And right as they're about to beat him down for it, uh, the three ponies, they throw off their dragon costume, and they surround Spike. They come to his defense. And, uh, then, yeah, Spike, when they ask about, are these your friends? He, uh, doesn't disown them. He's like, yeah, and they're better friends than you. They, uh, treat me like a friend, but, you know, except at the beginning of this episode, but anyway, so, and then right as they're, uh, about to hold their ground against these dragons, Spike changes his mind at the last minute. He's just like, run away! And they all bolt with him, and then Twilight teleports them to safety, and, uh, Spike, Hatches his new baby phoenix egg and learns that he's uh, happy he grew up in Ponyville. He um, considers them his family, and he's officially part of the group now. It's like, um, if there was any implication that he was separate from them before, that's gone now. And uh, this is really starting to become a problem. I mean, uh, as I said before, it seemed like Spike's episodes didn't respect him a lot, but I mean, now it's like they're piling on new stuff. I said, uh, the thing with the pony gang at the beginning of the episode, uh, it's, yeah, apparently now he's this helpless wimp without them, and I mean, um, yeah, what's more, he, he's having trouble, like, he can't really hold his ground against Rainbow Dash, trying to make him feel insecure for all this stuff, and you think that, okay, he's, I mean, gonna come into his own over the course of this episode, he's gonna, um, uh, Learn that, yeah, he's still a dragon. He still um, be confident in what he's capable of. You know, he uh, lose those insecurities and stuff. But not really. I mean, they actually kind of seem to imply more so that he is uh, weak and helpless. And that, uh, I mean, he goes up against the dragon gang. And, I mean, in the hazing competitions, I mean, they start laughing at him at first. Like, I bet you haven't. You still suck your claw. He's like, no, I stopped sucking my claw a couple months ago, and he starts doing it there. It's like, yeah, he's, uh, I don't know, just keeps painting this picture of him as this, uh, little 
unhuggable whim. That is it. And then he plays the hazing ga- games against them. And I mean, he, he doesn't completely go to, I mean, he uh, technically wins King of the, or King of the Horde because it's on top of a pile of jewels. So uh, he technically wins that by uh, outsmarting them, but he sneaks up when two of them are wrestling on the top and like tips them over. So, I mean, it's okay. You think the Joe is starting to acknowledge that, yeah, he, can make up for it in his own ways, even if he's not the biggest dragon. Then he slips, falls down. They just like take that one right away from him too, and the other yeah, still making fun of him for it. In the next scene, and even the one that he finally impresses them on, all he does is accidentally fall in and uh, belly smack. I mean, the episode really doesn't seem to imply that he did anything. It's like he, uh, the pony gang is helping him out, trying to make sure he doesn't like they uh, help him get to the top and. Uh, the King of the Horde game, they challenge him in their dragon costume and lose on purpose in the tail wrestling and, um, it's it, which is arm wrestling, I guess, essentially, but, um, it's just, you know, like, everyone, it's, um, it basically is saying that, yeah, he doesn't belong here, he's, uh, shouldn't be here, he is this little pushover, and I mean, it's, I guess they, well, I guess the show's not completely trying to do that but you know it does say that he does have ways to hold his own but um it's like it's trying to gently say yeah he doesn't belong here and i mean that's okay i mean it is what it is but just imagine if uh applejack or rainbow or even fluttershy was on this book because we saw fluttershy um in the in putting down your hoof that uh yeah she does not i mean they saw that one she challenge that when she's too passive like can she overcome that it, yes she can here uh nah, spike i mean he a for effort but he doesn't really belong here and i mean uh yeah he doesn't belong with these dragons and that's a good thing you know because his last episode you know i said they implied that just being a dragon is uh in and of itself a bad thing which you know i thought that was kind of the spirit kind of an inconsiderate way to present that. It seemed to sort of do a pro prejudice message. But if they implied that in the that last episode, the, the secret of my excess, they outright say it here. I, I mean, it's a yes, yeah, like um, you know, he finds these teenage dragons, which I mean, it's he's trying to figure out who he is, just like what. Um, a dragon is, uh, what, I mean, just comparing himself to these dragons, and you know, okay, you'd think that he'd have to consider a lot of things here, but I mean, uh, pros, cons, or just whether he likes it, but I mean, no, from, right from the start, these, uh, dragons, they are nothing but douchebags to him the whole time. They are punks, essentially, from... Uh, the perspective of somebody who's only heard about punks or seen them on TV or something or was picked on by one once. They have, like, they no redeeming qualities, no depth. They're just totally these one-dimensional, uh, gross-out guys. Just, I mean, they're really a generic thing. They're just those, uh, what, I don't know, generic cartoon schoolyard punks who like to uh, pick on little guys and, uh, crack dumb jokes and, uh, entertain themselves with, like, the gross-out antics and just the same thing. Again, it's so one-dimensional. And, I mean, these are the guys that Spike is supposed to be finding out about dragons, but learning what it means to be a dragon, discovering himself through, essentially. And, I mean, there's no nuance there. You know, there's no... It's just, uh, them actively doing everything they can to and some that yeah, dragons are a bunch of jerks and I mean I mean we've seen dragons so far too, it's just like the teenager thing just really kinda of seems to come out of nowhere. Just I don't you know, it just it's I mean, and we do get like scenes where they start to accept him, like I said, after the belly flop thing, but um it's starting to seem like okay, maybe they are forming some kind of a bond. Maybe there is going to be a little bit of nuance here where um, Spike is starting to, I don't know, 
learn from them. But I mean, in the end, maybe they'll realize that you know, it's more to learn from him or something, or get into what makes them tick, what makes them all a bunch of jerks. But I mean, it, no, they just kind of keep acting like jerks after that. I mean, the, you get the brief party scene, and then, uh, hey, let's go kill small animals for fun. It's, uh, it's like they're checking it off a list almost. That, uh, you know, just all the things they want to go through to turn dragons into these punks that you don't want to hang around. That just can The only reasonable thing to do is disown them. And yeah, at the end of this episode, Spike has not learned that he's a dragon, he's proud to be the kind of dragon that he is, but he's also proud to be part of the gang. He actually, what he says is that uh, he's, yeah, um, even though he was born a dragon, his time in Ponyville has taught him to be good and kind and just all of it. So, yeah, who I, what did he say? Who I am is not the same as what I am. So, and the last line too, he says to this phoenix, like, you're, uh, welcome to the family. I've got a lot to teach you about being a pony. So, and thankfully, we're spared the lesson on how bad phoenixes are. But, um, okay, just, yeah, he says all, all this that, um, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know, because, I mean, you think that this is, would sound like stuff that I have to be reading at least a little bit in here to take this away, that just, yeah, the show's actually saying that uh, you have to be like this, you can't be part in the show that's going on about how everybody's differences make them great, that, yeah, you know, you can't be like this, you can't be part of this kind of a mindset if you want to be uh, part of a group of real friends that, I mean, yeah, you think I'd be, re it sounds like I'm at least reading a little bit into that, but I mean, yeah, you hear him at the end just like so blatantly stating this, just like, yeah, thankfully I am not a, am not a dragon anymore, they not be, I mean, I'm, like, are you hearing yourselves? Like, this is just so blatantly, like, yeah, it, it's, uh, ponies or get the hell out. And that's really what it, really what it comes across like here. Just, yeah, so, okay. I just talked forever and a day about that. I mean, it just, um, it takes the problematic aspects of Spike to yet another level. And so, with that in mind, it's still probably actually his best episode. I mean, for all the, problems this creates, um, it still sort of tries to rise to that uh, quintessential Spike episode, and it does deliver to some extent. It, um, he Spike sits out on his own to take a challenge, and in some ways he does rise to it, he holds his own, and then um, he comes full circle in a lot of ways. He um, is, I mean, okay, these dragons, they do pressure him to be uh, just, um, okay, he, he didn't want to be seen as a wimp anymore, so they pressure him to go the opposite route and be a douche, be just like macho and sadistic and all that, and he ends up, uh, becoming probably the most impressive character in this episode by refusing, by, you know, saying, you know, no, I'm refusing to smash the phoenix egg and actually, uh, say that he would rather uh, face a pack of dragons standing up for this helpless little critter than um, just smash it. I mean, that's yeah, he, that's pretty brave, and I mean, it's uh, a pretty big step for him. I mean, because he said a helpless little egg, just like I was. And I mean, that's I guess so. Him too, he's starting to appreciate. He realizes what Twilight did for him, and just like what the gang has done for him, and the um, and that. Yeah, he is ready to stand up for that instead of so. That, so I mean, it does in its own way give him more confidence in what he is, and it let him find that confidence. And then the gang too, we see, which um, I guess there's a key reason that uh, Rainbow Dash was the third pony chosen to follow uh, Spike on his quest to make Twilight. Obviously, Rarity the one he has a crush on. It's kind of his closest relationship in the gang besides Twilight. But no reason for Rainbow Dash except the fact that she was the one uh, picking on him early on, just saying he's, yeah, one lame dragon and all that. But I mean, she comes along here and she's right there with Twilight and Rarity. Like, no, she doesn't want him to 
go join the dragons and toughen up. She wants uh, him to be okay. She wants to make sure he's safe. And I mean, she wants him to be part of the group and all of that. So, and that's, it's a, all, well, that's kind of the approach you see with all three of them. But yeah, they're, uh, Spike chooses to stand up to the dragons and then, uh, the pony gang has his back. And I mean, I don't know if they did the whole, uh, yeah, but we we have your back. Now let's run away as fast as we can. I don't know if that was for time's sake. That was kind of like, come on, can't you give them one cool moment to actually overcome these darn dragons? And instead they teleport away and they add that the dragons crash into a tree. But I mean, I don't know. so but okay, that was pretty good. Uh, there are laughs in this episode. The thing with Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash at the beginning, and uh, okay, the Biggest laugh, though, has to be um, where you know, the gang, they challenge Spike to the tail wrestling so they can take a dive, he can win because they lose on purpose. And, I mean, they were worried that the dragons were going to see right through the costume early on, and that's almost what happens. They're, they have no idea that it looks nothing like any of them. They're just like, who's this weirdo? But then one of them walks up and says, I think he's Crackle's cousin. And they cut to Crackle, who is some kind of... Neurotic dragon who looks just like their costume and uh, seems to be not totally right in the head. He's like, oh, oh, oh. something. That's you know, my crackle impression. I'll be here. I won't be here all week. I'll be leaving, like I said. But that aside, uh, so okay. But that, yeah, you cut to crackle. And it's like they've lucked out because they look just like him. And okay, that was hilarious. So okay, points there. So yeah, in spite of the problems at this episode, it's probably Spike's finest hour we've seen so far, and so I knew by the end of it, this wasn't like the last two where I was going to be like back and forth and, you know, will I or won't I? No, I, uh, right, I knew the minute this episode ended that it was a thumbs up. It's a below average episode for the standard this show has maintained, but it's still uh, a thumbs up and not, um, not sideways. No, it gets my vote of approval. Reluctantly, because I mean, I would like to almost bring it to task for some of what it's doing, but even so, yeah, not taking the uh, set on that, so yeah, uh, vote of a few. And okay, next episode, I believe, is Hurricane Fluttershy, so, so we're back to Fluttershy again already, so we'll see how that turns out.